Good morning, Enid. Welcome to the show. Here we are on this Thursday, May 17. Thank you for joining us. Let me encourage you to grab a, a donut, cup of coffee, milk, whatever it takes, but just grab a, some refreshment and join us for the next 30 minutes as we uh, come to you live uh, here on Enid Television Network on Channel 12 and 112. Also, we're live streaming around the globe to all of our friends around the globe on enidtv.org. This is uh, Good Morning Enid. It's time to rise and shine. Good morning, Enid. Thanks again for joining us today. It's currently about 59 degrees, but let's take a look at that bus stop forecast and see how it's going to get later today. Looks like it's going to get up to a high of 84 with partly cloudy skies, and I heard there is a very slight chance of rain later on in the evening. A low tonight of 65 degrees, not very high winds, only 10 to 15 miles an hour, so pretty low for Oklahoma. But other than that, looks like it's going to be a pretty nice day today. It was just three weeks ago, I think, that we were complaining about the cold, and all of a sudden we got all this heat. Yeah. Um, let's look at the weekend. Uh, that as... you were complaining about the cold? <laughs> but now I'm complaining again, because we're in the 90s, so. <laughs> um, this is our three-day weekend. It looks um, partly cloudy, mostly sunny, and um, definitely going to be a warm one. Um, winds are not that bad. Um, looks like it's going to be a fairly good weekend. Sarah, that's what we do. We keep the tradition going. We complain about the cold. <laughs> and then when it's hot and muggy and humid, we complain then. So <laughs> that's, that's what we do. So, well, thank you for joining us. Uh, let's look at the temperatures across the state. We've really been blessed with some great uh, rain showers across the state of Oklahoma uh, this past week, and we're grateful for that. Big City of Buffalo is coming in here at 7.30 this morning at 67 degrees. Big City of Marlowe, where my uh, mother-in-law uh, is from that area. You can see it's still mid-60s. Muskogee's one of the cooler spots at 59 degrees. So that's what it looks like across the state. And again, we've had some great rain, so we appreciate the water that comes to our state. So if you're planning to head out on a drive or whatever business trip today, those are our statewide temperatures. Uh, I believe we're a week away from school. I saw Dr. Floyd yesterday at the State of the City address. He looked pretty tired, so it must be the end of the school which means food's involved? Yes, there's gotta be a menu. Let's look, <laughs> today it's gonna be Salisbury steak, scalp potatoes, whole grain baked okra, peaches, whole grain hot roll, and milk. For tomorrow we have Plainsman Victory Burger, onion rings, ranch beans, pickles, tropical fruit, and milk. Plainsman Victory Burger, okay. <laughs> That's right. I think I, I vote for Friday, that, that, that really looked pretty good. Yeah, so. I think I would skip today and definitely go Friday, too. <laughs> well, again, thank you for joining us. As Aaron said, we're going to work our way up to a rather warm 84 degrees today, and it'll probably be humid like it was yesterday. But um, anyway, we're just grateful for the water that we've had here on this Thursday, May 17. It's 7.33, and the NBA playoffs are just wide open. Everything is going. But to keep us updated on the news and events that happened overnight, we always go to just one person, and that's the bow tie guy, Derek Silas, and he has the Oklahoma Minute. In national news, Monday, the United States officially opens its embassy in Jerusalem, recognizing the city as the true capital of Israel. Palestinians, who claim East Jerusalem as the capital of a future state, oppose the relocation. Protests flared to new levels of violence in the hours before the ceremony at spots along the Gaza-Israeli border. And in local news, yesterday, Mayor Bill Schuette's State of the City address was held with special guests Governor George Nye, Miss Rodeo 2018, Taylor Spears, and music artist Bobby Holiday. The mayor concluded that the state of the city is strong. And Enid Police Department Sergeant John Robinson's use of Narcan saves a woman's life that overdosed on Monday. In sports, Game 2 of the Western Conference Finals was last night with a win in Houston's favor, 127 to the Warriors, 105. Game 3 is Sunday. Fun fact, 
Tahlequah, Oklahoma is the tribal capital of the Cherokee Nation. And on this day in history in 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court hands down a unanimous decision in Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka, ruling that racial segregation in public education facilities is unconstitutional. And that's the Oklahoma Minute. Thank you very much for very that good. information, Derek. Um, with summer around the corner, if you have any vacation pictures or any comments, questions, any suggestions that you would like to share um, with us, please go ahead and um, email us at gme at ina.org. Um, our hosting cows are always there just waiting for um, some mail from you guys. Looking intently. <laughs> yes, definitely. And we do have two pictures for today. Um, here is the first one. We, this, we, we may need Aaron to do the play-by-play -play for us on this. This is my brother Jack. He just graduated and his very beautiful girlfriend Caitlin. They both graduated from the University of North Dakota and my brother's going awesome. on to get his master's degree. So congratulations those two on that. Yes. And then this was me this weekend. We went um, <laughs> spelunking <look> in <laughs> Alabaster Cavern. You look lost for some reason. <laughs> Happy yeah, that was, to be lost too. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was just kind of scary crawling through some of those holes. <laughs> I don't looks, think I can do that. Looks a little claustrophobic <laughs> to me, That's but exactly uh, what I was you thinking. can have that, Erin. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Definitely. Um, if you're looking for any major plans for this hot weekend that's coming up, um, we always have Erin with what's happening. Thanks, Sarah. Let's kick off this weekend early. Today, Fly on the Ford starts at Woodring Regional Airport. Starts today at 2 p.m. and goes till 5 p.m. And then 9 a.m. through 5 p.m. this uh, Friday and Saturday. What it is, it is a chance to try, fly on the Ford Tri-Motor, which is the first luxury airliner. And the one at Woodring is the EAA Ford 4AT, also nicknamed the Tin Goose. So it is $70 for an adult ticket in advance, $75 if you walk up, and $50 for 17 and under. You get to take a ride on one of the older planes, and it supports the Experimental Aircraft Association, which they are a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing the spirit of aviation. And then on Saturday, Chow Down at the Hennessy Park runs from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. at Hennessy Memorial Park. So not needed, but definitely something still fun to go to. There'll be food trucks and vendors, and then there will be live music at Vernas Vinery following the event. There's going to be pa uh, Pampered Chef, Posh, food trucks, and it's hosted by the Hennessy Lions Club. So it's definitely something to go check out if you're interested in food trucks or just want to go check out some good music. And then finally, also on Saturday, we have the second annual mini golf tournament from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. at For Our Kids Mini Golf. It's $5 for a game or $20 for a team of four. There's games, food, prizes, and proceeds are going to benefit the For Our Kids Foundation, which was started in 2003 by a small group of parents and educators that wanted to provide opportunities for individuals with special needs in Garfield County. So it's definitely a great opportunity, plus who doesn't love mini golf? So that's what's happening this weekend. Thank you, Aaron. It's 7.38 on this Thursday, May 17. I don't know about you two, but is uh, the month of May moving along quickly? So quickly. <laughs> yeah, sure is. Well, I guess we're trying to transition from the springtime to the summertime, and we have a little uh, feature we want to show you right now. We have a very special guest here on Good Morning Enid. Thank you for joining us today. We will have that special guest right after this. Welcome back. Good morning, Nina. Thank you for joining us on this uh, Thursday, May 17. And again, we're, we're around 60 degrees this morning, but Sarah, we're working our way up to a nice, humid, non-California 84 degrees <laughs> That's today. That's correct. So enjoy, I hope you enjoyed that little video piece with all the spring flowers here in Enid. 
uh, you know, when the canola fields were turning yellow and just, it just reminding you that times are changing here in Northwest Oklahoma. Well, our very special guest is Warren Wilson. We, we appreciate Warren being with us today. Good morning, Warren. Good morning. Appreciate it. You doing all right? Doing good today. How are well, you? I'm all right. I got coffee and uh, <laughs> air conditioners on and low humidity. We're in great shape. Um, Warren, right off the bat, uh, we, we want to talk this morning about um, a topic that's been in the news, especially at the legislature quite a bit, and Governor Fallon doing some things where vetoing certain bills and stuff, all doing with concealed carry and things of this nature, but our topic this morning deals with that handgun license. Um, many people are going to classes and getting the handgun license and getting their certificate or license, if you will, but let's, let's go back to the beginning. Um, can you kind of tell us what prompted, at least in the state of Oklahoma, where you were required to get a license? Was, was it a legislature move to said, okay, in 1990 or whatever, from now on, if you have a firearm, you gotta have a, gotta have a license. Can you tell us when that all started? Well, as far back as I can find in, in the legal aspect of it, there, were, there, were no, uh, there was no allowed, no legal carrying of a firearm in Oklahoma unless you were hunting or at the target range when the actual uh, license passed was in 1994, and okay. uh, then it came into effect in 95. And what it appears had happened was there was a lot of uh, anti-criminal kind of a, a sentiment in, in the country, and, and especially in the central states in the 80s. Florida kind of started it off with the first, what we call a shall issue licensing system in about 1987. And then several states followed, and we were one of them. Okay, and again, just for our viewers to let you know why Warren's with us today, um, he uh, is a qualified and certified instructor for the handgun class, so we, we turn to his expertise today for this important topic. That's right, and I don't know uh, if you heard Steve mention earlier, I'm from California, so I wasn't as aware of guns in California as I've been here. Absolutely. Everybody seems to have a gun here, but since I moved here, I've always been like, I've always wanted to own my gun, but um, never really knew where to start. So for those out there that are watching us this morning that are probably just as lost as I am, would you be able to tell us a little bit about the application process for this license? Absolutely. I, I encourage people to, to apply online. It, it's, a, it's a very good process that the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation has put into place, and you, you can do a lot of it as an applicant online, including even uploading your photograph and paying your licensing fees. So uh, the, the first thing I recommend people do is to go to the OSBI's website. They have a, a section just for handgun licenses. Download the book and read some of the frequently asked questions and some of the, 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 um, the process there. And then find a qualified instructor that you personally vet and make sure that instructor is going to fit your needs and that they're qualified in your mind to teach you. Uh, one way to do that is to ask questions, of course, of them. Uh, after you uh, go get your class, then it requires a $100 fee to the OSBI. You'll apply online, you'll print all that out, but the good thing is is when you submit it through the OSBI online, they can immediately start working on your background check and that can speed the process up by at least about a week or so. Uh, after you submit your, your uh, stuff online, you're gonna print it out and then you can pay online as well. You'll print it out and you'll take it all to the sheriff's office. You wanna make an appointment with him to get your fingerprints taken. And the sheriff will then take all your, all your paperwork and they'll send it in with your fingerprints to the OSBI and then your process is started. Let's, let's take, uh, thank you for that information. Let's take the, the question of the finding a reputable instructor a, a step further. I do remember, it, it, it probably has been a couple of years, but it seemed like there were, there were even some ads on television, come see Joe. I'm the instructor and right. you know I, I can do this and you don't know Joe at all but you see his television ad. What would be some of the questions um, you said to ask questions and stuff but you know for somebody watching the, the interview this morning Warren, what would you, where would you start in asking? What kind of information? I mean I, I, don't, I really wouldn't know how to begin the 20 question process. <laughs> Well, what I would do if it was me is, uh, and what I do now when I take classes is I, I, I research the instructor. I want to know how much training they have. I want to yeah. know what their training is involved in. If someone is, a, is an excellent rifle competitive shooter, and they've, but they've only had a two-day class on how to teach handgun license, and that's all, their, all that they have on that topic, that might be somebody I wouldn't look at. I might look at somebody who 
consistently goes to more classes and is always trying to learn. The best instructor is a good student. And that's what I, what most of us there who are trying to become good instructors, that's what we shoot for. We try to be a good student. Excuse mm -hmm. the pun. That's very good. Um, you mentioned this class. What does the class entail? What are the topics that are covered in this class? Well, and this is where it gets really important, I think, is the, uh, the classroom portion is about four to five hours, and then the rest of the up approximately eight hours is, is dry fire and live fire at the actual range. So we start out in the classroom. We do uh, a lot of safety stuff, and a lot of um, stuff that people don't get is the law. When people say, I don't really need that class because I've, I've shot, and my dad taught me how to be safe, and I've had hunter safety. Well, that's great, but do you know about the laws as pertaining to where you can carry a firearm, how you can carry a firearm under the law, where, um, where it's illegal, where it's not illegal. For example, the difference between a, a restaurant that serves alcohol and an actual bar, carrying a firearm there is the difference between whether you have a license or not, is the difference between being legal in a restaurant and being illegal in a felony in a bar. So those are the kind of things that we really cover in the classroom portion. And then of course safety and uh, we cover a little bit about how to shoot, but the biggest part of it is the law and safety. Then we go to the range and we do some dry fire and some handling and make sure that everybody's safe. And then we actually do our live fire practice run. And then we do a live fire qualification run. It's not terribly challenging, but it does give us an idea if someone is safe or not. And then of course, if they're not safe or they don't pass their written test, they don't get their license. Okay. Warren, let's talk a little bit about the curriculum. Being born and raised in Oklahoma and lived in Oklahoma most of my life, there was an understanding about guns and my my pickup truck, my car, or my home, or whatever, the, kind of the Oklahoma version, if you will. Mm -hmm. But one of the enlightening things to me when I took the class a few years ago was what you just addressed about uh, where to keep the weapon, mm -hmm. not load it, not under the seat, put it in the back if you're ever stopped, tell an officer, I do have a weapon in the car. That was very enlightening to me because I was kind of groomed in the the, right. the Oklahoma rural farm way of, of doing things. So let's talk about the curriculum. Who writes it? Where does, where does it start? Well, it's a really good curriculum written. It's about an eight hour course and it's written by the Council on Law Enforcement Education and Training, what we call CLEAT. Uh, they, they handle all the training and oversee all the training for, for law enforcement in the state and for security and now bail bonds enforcers. And so they were tasked by the, the legislature to write the curriculum. And it's, it's a really well done curriculum, but remember it's only eight hours. So it still doesn't cover as much as we'd like it to. And, and is the eight hours, is that a legislature? Yes, it, it, it uses the, the literal words about eight hours. Okay. Very good. Is there an age limit to participate in this class? Yes, when Great it was question. first passed, it was, it was 23 years old because the legislature thought it would be a good idea to to keep kids in, in college, which is generally about the age they graduate, is 22. So they thought 23 would be a good age, and there was a, a bit of a backlash over that, so that now it's 21. Okay. One of the things that I learned in the class was to raise the awareness about uh, carrying a weapon to other states. Uh, be careful if you're going to Pennsylvania, New Jersey, just, just, and I'm just throwing those states out there and not directing anything towards them, but it raised the awareness that Oklahoma has their set of laws, and maybe not, the others are not as conform to the law. It, it just varies from state to state. So how in the world can you find out if you're on vacation, you take a weapon, and you're driving to Las Vegas? How do you know what that law is and if you're exactly. abiding the law if you're in New Mexico? <laughs> exactly. Uh, the, the good news is about having a handgun license is you get some reciprocity with other states. Okay. They will honor our license with some states. And at last check, it was 38, I believe, that Oklahoma has reciprocity with. We honor everyone else's, all 50 states, but not everyone honors ours <laughs> because they have, everybody has their own laws. So when you travel out of state, you have to be cognizant of that. One way to do that is the OSBIA's website. They actually have a current list of all those states that we have reciprocity with. However, <laughs> you should always do your research before you leave and make sure nothing has changed because it changes on a regular basis. Nevada, for example, has gone back and forth on whether they will accept our license on a regular basis. And of course, Nevada is one of the states that a lot of people go to for, for vacations. Sure, sure. Well, I think sometimes you hear in the news of a professional athlete or, or someone of notoriety, if you will, and they've carried a weapon across state mm -hmm. lines and 
they thought, well, I've been carrying it forever, and I didn't know it was against the law or different. So I guess uh, be prepared. You go on vacation. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Do your homework. Do your homework. Okay. You mentioned this website um, where uh, people can go and look at other uh, other state um, state laws regarding uh, the uh, license. Uh, where can people go to learn more about handgun licenses? Is that the only um, resource, or is there, are there other resources? Well, I would start with the OSBI first. That's going to be um, sure. where you're going to get the most accurate information. They're in charge of issuing licenses, so they have all the information as far as that goes. And then um, CLEAT would be another website to, to go look at if you wanted to learn a little bit about the training. But almost everything is going to be under OSBI's handgun licensing. That's where I would start before I would go anywhere else because you don't understand. Maybe the veracity of the information isn't as good as it is with OSBI. Warren, this is great information. We appreciate you being with us here this morning. Good morning, Nina. At 7.50, we'll have another question or two for Warren uh, Wilson here in just a few moments. We will continue with the show. Again, we're working our way up to 84 degrees on a sunny Thursday, May 17. And if you just join us this morning, we wouldn't want you to miss the Oklahoma Minute. So here is Derek Silas. Thanks, Sarah. In national news, Monday, the United States officially opens its embassy in Jerusalem, recognizing the city as the true capital of Israel. Although Palestinians, who claim East Jerusalem as the capital of a future state, oppose the relocation. In local news, Mayor Bill Shuey, State of the City address was held yesterday with special guests. The mayor concluded that the state of the city is strong. And any police department's Sergeant John Robinson's use of Narcan saves a woman in lies that overdosed on Monday. In sports, Game 2 of the Western Conference Finals was last night with a win in Houston's favor, 127 to Golden State's 105. Game 3 is Sunday. Fun fact, Tahlequah, Oklahoma, is the tribal capital of the Cherokee Nation. And on this day in history, in 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court's hand down, hands down an unanimous decision in Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka ruling that racial segregation in public educational facilities is unconstitutional. And that's the Oklahoma Minute. Now here's Kevin for more events at the Central National Bank Center. Welcome to the Central National Bank Center. I'm the General Manager, Kevin Brisky, and uh, we have put together a very exciting lineup for these next handful of months. Uh, we've announced three shows already these last three weeks. This week, we're announcing Paw Patrol is coming to the Central National Bank Center, um, one of the top family shows um, right now. It's going to be November 27th, November 28th. Um, 6 p.m. on November 27th and on November 28th there will be two shows at 10 a.m. and at 6 p.m. so three chances to see Paw Patrol right here at the Central National Bank Center. Tickets go on sale this Friday. Um, they start at around $20, go all the way up to about $100 uh, for the uh, meet and greet VIP package. So uh, we're really excited for that show again November 27th and 28th. Tickets on sale this Friday. Also this Friday, Ron White will be right here at the Central National Bank Center. We do have a few $70 tickets available, um, also $55 tickets and $40 tickets available. It's going to be a really funny show. Ron White, one of the top comedians touring right now and uh, better known for his time with the Blue Collar Comedy Tour, also known for his scotch drinking, cigar smoking antics. Um, and that's going to be right here at the Central National Bank Center this Friday at 8 p.m. It is for mature audiences only. Also, coming up in June, we have Easton Corbin. That is going to be on June 14th. We have Newsboys on June 30th. Um, and it's the United Tour, so it's going to be the four new members or current members with the two original members. We also have Lone Star, um, a great country group, on August 2nd. Comic-Con, August 4th and 5th. Ronnie Millsap on September 23rd. So we have a great lineup from May through November and we're not done adding to it. More to come, but really excited for what we have on sale. For tickets, cmbcenter.com, 855-TIXENID, or just visit us at the um, second floor of the convention hall. That's where our box office is during the day between about nine and five, and you can get your tickets that way. Great lineup again, just announced Paw Patrol. That'll be November 27th and 28th. Tickets go on sale this Friday, and this Friday at the CMB Center, Ron White at 8 p.m. Look forward to seeing you there. Until then, back to you, Steve, in the studio.
Thank you, Kevin. Good job every week or every other week for us. Appreciate that. At 7.54 on this Thursday morning, thank you for joining us. I'd like to remind you, next Monday we have the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission meeting. That will be broadcast on the Enid Television Network, Channel 12 and 112, and we will live stream that as well. That gets underway at 6 o'clock in the council chambers. Also next Tuesday will be the uh, city council meeting. It was supposed to be this Tuesday, but due to some changes in schedule, it will be on the 22nd. Regular routine, 5 o'clock study session, 6.30 the council meeting. So two very important meetings. Real quick, Sarah, people are planning for the weekend. What's the three-day weather forecast yes, look like? Yes, we definitely want to bring back the three-day weekend. Um, here it is. It's going to be nice and warm, uh, partly cloudy, um, but it looks like it's going to be nice. Um, so definitely a great weekend to have some great plans and go out. Very good. Let me uh, remind you that at 8 o'clock this morning, the Commissioner of Public Safety here, we're talking about handgun law and safety, gun safety, and concealed carry license, the uh, Commissioner of Public Safety. Uh, Rusty Rhodes is our special guest at 8 o'clock this morning, so keep that in mind if you can stay with us then. Yes, and we uh, definitely want to take the time to introduce the pet of the week, and for that, we want to bring in Charlotte. Sparkles is a two-year-old female uh, Shepherd Terrier mix, and she's currently in Pen 1. She's looking for a new home. She's a little bit scared and shy here at the shelter, so she's looking for a place to feel safe. So come by and visit us and visit Sparkles. We have lots of other dogs and cats ready for adoption. Thank you, Charlotte. We appreciate you and also Animal Control, all the officers out there at Animal Control for what they do. And again, it's 7.57. Boy, the morning goes quick. Quick <laughs> 30 minutes, huh, Warren? It does. Yeah. Real, I guess we're down to one more question or so. Um, Warren, why, can you just kind of tell us, why is it so important to have this handgun training? I've been around guns all my life. I know about this and that. Convince me this training's important. <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, we do get that quite a bit. And uh, it, it's important because not only for the certification and the liability protection that comes from that, everyone has a little something they can pick up from the class. Uh, the important things, other than how to shoot and some of the techniques to shoot, that you may not have picked up just with your family or your friends or from the military or for law enforcement, the biggest things are the, are the, are the safety aspects of it. You can't have too much safety training. It can't happen. There's no way. And you can't have too much familiarity with the laws. If you're going to carry a firearm, you need to know what the laws are, and you're not going to get that just from everyday life. You're going to have to have some formalized training, and it's a good idea to, to make sure when you're vetting that instructor, make sure they have some ability to teach the law and have some experience with it. Not to sound like a broken record, but when I went through the training, that was one thing that really raised the awareness for me was the kind of the, the legal aspects and uh, the laws. That was important. Sarah? Uh, less than a minute to go. You have a question for Warren? Anything? Um, yeah. How, how often are these classes held? Good question. Well, that kind of depends on the instructor. And, and we have your website that I think has mm -hmm. been on the screen. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, there, there we go. You want to reach out to Warren. So, uh, I, I don't do a lot of open enrollment uh, hanging license classes. I mostly do closed enrollment classes. Uh, there are a lot of folks out there that, are, that, that do a very good job with them. You can uh, look on OSBI's website, they have a list of instructors there and you can go through that list and decide which one would, would fit your area and would fit you, what, what you would want out of your training. And then um, just decide, pick a class that you want to go to and I encourage everyone to go to it. And then after that, make sure you go ahead and get your license because we see a lot of folks that maybe aren't comfortable after they get out of the class, go back and do another one. It's, it's only $50 for the most part. We gotta go. Warren Wilson, thank you so much. Been very informative. Thank you. We'll have you, we'll have you back for sure. Make it a great day, everyone. Good morning, Enid.